I have an idea. The man thought. Amnesia. I have amnesia. Yet this bothers me not. Hi, this is DV for our Modern Video Sound Showcase, and today we're here with Ray Gaucher. Um, Ray, you just recently released uh, this the album, The Queen of Cups. Um, it's a very interesting album for those with an, an adventurous, eclectic turn of mind. Uh, it has contemporary folk, old European folk, country rock, uh, avant-garde, funk, everything. Um, what are you working on now? I'm resurfacing material that I uh, created just about the same time that um, it's a little more angry. Uh, might sound more contemporary, but that's purely accidental. Uh, it was all created uh, over a period of 20 years, and there's really no context towards now. I just felt that the material that came together there belonged together, and what I'm doing now belongs together in a different phase. You know. This is kind of, this is overall kind of a mellow, spacey, dreamy type album. Your next uh, album is going to be more high energy? Yeah, more, a lot, a lot more. Uh, th there might be, f from some corners, you know, a, a look that it's more danceable or accessible, but uh, it's still, from my thinking, uh, the same vein, it's just at different times of day. I mean, yeah. I'm more... You know, more angry one day or more happy. Uh, I didn't want to feel scattered. I like the idea of a concept album rather than singles that are separated by each other. I'm, I'm not really big on single-oriented uh, material. Um, that would be looking for a different vibe, whereas I like to have an idea that you're, you're going through a journey on a, a collection like that, an LP or a CD. You seem to be uh, very enchanted by um, classic um, gothic imagery and sensibilities. I, uh, even as a kid, I was into, I've always been to history, and it gives a sort of context of uh, Poe or classic literature, even like the Iliad. The, the concepts of um, devotion and loyalty. All, from an old standpoint and for instance on Queen of Cups it shows the more ethereal uh, maybe even uplifting side of it whereas my next project will sh show the darker side uh, of what, well, what they call goth now which has surfaced and resurfaced it's not really all that no uh, it's just that now they've labeled it again uh, when I recorded some of the material 20 years ago, I wasn't thinking, oh, the kids in the malls will be walking around wearing black and maybe they'll like it. It's just happening. So you're not necessarily a hopelessly morbid SOB. Well, I'm, you get I'm, angry, <laughs> you get happy, and yeah. the whole thing. I am, I have my uplifting moments. I mean, you know, SOB, that's a point of view, but I'm not morbid. I don't think I am. I, I revel in whatever morbidity there is. There are references in that uh, CD. Uh, some are very, you know, upfront, and some are subtle and sublime uh, towards, like vampirism. Uh, you look at it from whatever you take to it. There's a little rumor floating around that the gem of Columbia, South Carolina, none other than Earworm, is rumored to be um, working on a video for uh, one of the tracks on Queen of Cups. Yeah, a wind song is a sh short piece. Uh, I wrote it when I was 13, the, the uh, poem, and uh, I put together a, a part where I played two harmonicas at once. You lose that because there's so much studio material done nowadays with, you know, overdubbing and everything, but the people that were here witnessed me sing, you know, playing the both harmonicas at the same time, and it gives it sort of a southern, maybe almost Cajun feel, and where it goes with that offbeat short story of oh, maybe about a minute. Uh, I think it's right up there, uh, the Earworm Alley. So I, th to I thought the same thing. I thought it had a very southern storyteller type yeah. quality to it. Yeah. And Earworm likes to work in material that, you know, it's there and then it's suddenly gone and you're half baffled as to what you just saw. 
and I'm I'm really challenged to try to guess as to what he'll come up with or they'll come up with uh, thinking about this material. In the meadows there aboded a woman fair, and on her songs, they say, she can steal your breath away. For playing so beautiful, melody so sweet, caressing the persons of the ears they meet. But as I find her not there, it is but the whistling of willows swinging in the air. Most of the material, in some sort of sense, is almost romantic. So I feel that to have a song, conversation with a woman, it just brings out more from me. It's like she's challenging me in the lyrics to, to go even further, or she'll enhance what I'm doing. Uh, I like to search out women for my works that haven't done such material. Although the, I, you know, I have Margie Tyrrell, who uh, she's got a fine voice and she appears on a lot of my songs. She had never recorded before. Uh, none of the other women have ever recorded. I like that idea, almost like catching them off guard so they have, in a sense, song-wise, a virginal appeal. Uh, they're being brought up to this point where there might be just a little awe of being in the studio, they're you, lost. You like to, <laughs> you know, and sometimes they get that little gem where they, they don't feel so lost and they actually challenge with their voice. And with gifted voices, you never know what's going to happen. It's not like a, a, somebody that's been singing in a band for 20 years and you say, I know what they're going to sound like. No, I have no idea. And, that's where the magic happens. I'm surprised, and then I have to react. So you, you like to discover your own divas, and yeah, you're on the lookout for happy accidents. Oh yeah, big, big time, because, you know, as, as well as I may know a song, there are some songs on Queen of Cups that I've played a thousand times. You know, I've sat down, and I've strummed my guitar, and I've played along, and the song has evolved over a period, and I think I know it. And then all of a sudden, somebody that never heard the song before, they hear it like three times, they toss a back up vocals and I say, geez, you know, that part of the song is suddenly shining and I just thought of it as a passage that led to something else and it brings a whole new flavor to the song. So things kind of take on a life of their own sometimes. Exactly, exactly. and it almost always works. You, you run into problems, there, you know, everybody's human and not every connection clicks. I'd like to think that most of the time I've been lucky, you know, uh, as much as the hard work goes into it, I, I like the idea of luck also. Because if I think that I've been lucky, it also leads to, you know, the future is going to be the same as the, the past and the present. So if I have luck in the past, I can hope to be lucky again. It's one thing to think, oh, my hard work's going to do it for me. But there's a certain vanity to that. You think, oh, I've done it all. No, no. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If this didn't click and that didn't click without me knowing, it wouldn't have happened. And all that hard work would have meant nothing. Well, we are lucky enough to, we do have a video for your medieval fantasy, The Song of the Jester. <laughs> Bring on the fool! Good evening, me lords and ladies. The jester holds the truth of life It's not in his hands Even the king will turn to him When it is merriment he demands No one seems to envy him Yet they watch him just the same Oh, catch 
true. 